Hi folks, welcome back to Aeon Pro. Today we're going to do something that I've been, you know, trying to do for the last several months at this point uh, and just haven't gotten around to it. And that's to take a look at this extremely old, uh, basically non-usable XFX Radeon HD 7870. Now, this card is from a build prior to Black Ice here, a build that I called Toto. And in fact, if you go back to the video when we built Black Ice, uh, the very first streamed video, uh, I talk about transferring all of the parts from Toto into Black Ice. Well, this was the video card at the time, and I did in fact transfer it over. Now, I, I don't want to say it was completely unusable. I, I was able to use it for a couple of months while I was waiting for the rest of the parts to finish the upgrade on Black Ice, but it was a less than stellar experience. Now part of that could just be because of how old the card is. It only has two gigabytes of VRAM, which in today's day and age is actually really small. Uh, even the cheapest offerings from Nvidia come with six. Uh, so it is a little uh, outdated in that regard, but I think the biggest issue may just be upkeep. Um, I'm just looking at the fans and the heat sink. Uh, it could use a good cleaning. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this apart I've got some compressed air and uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean it up. I'm gonna get rid of the uh, thermal paste that's on here and replace it and see if we can't improve the numbers out of this card. Now again, I'm not looking for anything phenomenal with a card of this age, but if we can get some of the FPS up, uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, experience that, uh, especially since I do want to see if I can get some money off of this card because it, again, it's not completely unusable, it just doesn't suit itself for my purposes, which would be gaming and video editing, um, particularly the kinds of games that I play. If you're playing Overwatch on low settings, you'd have no problem using this card, uh, but that's not what I do. So here we are, we've got the uh, HD 7870 plugged into Black Ice over here, and uh, I had to install all the Radeon drivers because normally my main card is uh, a 1070 Ti from NVIDIA. So I haven't done a full DDU only because I'm lazy. Uh, if we really wanted our numbers to be 100% perfect, uh, I would do that and just remove all of these NVIDIA drivers. But at the end of the day, I have to use the 1070 Ti to even edit this video. So I don't feel like having to uninstall all the NVIDIA drivers and reinstall all the NVIDIA drivers. Uh, it's just a hassle I don't want to deal with right now. So this may not be 100% perfect testing experience, but uh, I wanted to do it this way just because I'm lazy. Okay, so it looks like we're all done here. Our Cinebench score comes out to 107.95. Now, I've used this same card in this same computer before and gotten better results. Uh, if you look up here, this is a really close, I don't even know if this will show up on the camera, but our number one spot here is actually this PC setup with this 7800 series card. Uh, the CPU was at 4.05 gigahertz, and I know I had the uh, graphics card overclocked as well. We don't, we're not running any overclocks on this card right now because we're just trying to get a base number here before we clean it. Uh, I'm also now working with a 4.0 gigahertz overclock on my Ryzen, uh, my Ryzen 2600X because it was just more stable than 4.05 uh, across the board with everything that I do. So we've done better. In fact, we've done about 20 points better in the past with uh, better overclocks and just making use of everything that we had. But I didn't want to feel like uh, overclocking this because it, it wouldn't give us a solid number to set our basis on. So now that we've done this, we're gonna go ahead and open up uh, Cinebench and run Firestrike. Okay, so really quickly, I wanna go over the settings that we're doing for 3D Mark here. Since we're just testing the video card, I don't wanna run the entire Fire Strike. Uh, and I, also, we're in extreme. Is that the right one? <laughs> okay, let's try this again, because my battery died. So, <laughs> we're in Fire Strike. Ah, uh, this video is becoming a nightmare. We're in Fire Strike. Our settings are as follows. We are just running the graphics tests because the CPU uh, is gonna change our number overall and the score that we get overall, but we're not interested in that because we know the CPU is not gonna change. The only thing that's gonna be, or that should change is our graphics test scores because we're gonna be clean, cleaning the graphics card. So everything else should remain the same. We're running trilinear texture filtering with MSAA set at one and the max AF set at two. We don't wanna run it too hard because this card is older and I don't want it to die 
trying to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and run the two graphics tests and uh, we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so we have our results here and uh, as expected, didn't do great. All things said and done, our graphics score came out to 6,499. I anticipate there to be an improvement just by cleaning it out. Uh, and greater than within the, the area of uh, common error. So we hit uh, just shy of 32 FPS on the first graphics test and about 25 and a half SPS on the second. Those should improve when we clean this out. So we're gonna clean it, we're gonna add some uh, new thermal paste and uh, then we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so one thing I forgot to do before we opened this up, but I remembered, thankfully, um, I wanted to get some temperature readings. So we've been running Fire Strike on loop for probably about 30 minutes now. Sitting in the 50s right now in between uh, scenes, but has so far maxed at 64 degrees Celsius. Uh, and again, best case scenario because we actually have the front panel of Black Ice open right now. Let me, let me grab you and I'll show you this here real quick. Sorry, this is not the best setup, but it is the best I can do. So we have our uh, front panel is actually open here. As you can see, no thermal, thermal, no tempered glass holding in heat. Uh, we're kind of just sitting natural here. So the XFX card is just running open faced here. And uh, so yeah, best case scenario, looks like we're maxing at about 64 C. So. We'll keep that in mind as we open this up and take a look at things and see if uh, cleaning this out and pulling out uh, the old thermal paste and putting in some new stuff uh, will improve that and uh, get us to lower temperatures. It's not bad, 64 is actually pretty decent considering we're running it at basically the maximum it's capable of running. Um, but again, just trying to see if we can improve it a little bit. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. Now, I was looking at this and there's some very interesting uh, bits. But I think what we need to do first is take off this shroud. And there's a couple of little screws on the side, but I think this orange bracket actually comes off first. So let's start there. See, will that come off? Yep. So there's the shroud, which is very dusty on the inside. Interestingly, the fans are not mounted to the shroud at all. They're separate. Um, which will kind of suck because trying to clean this up means I'm gonna have to pull those off. Looks like these bottom screws may be holding it in. Looks like we're voiding the warranty, which I kind of knew was gonna happen anyway, but just remember, if you ever open up your own video card, you're probably voiding the warranty. As long as you're prepared to handle that, you should be fine, but it is something you'll have to deal with. Okay, so that was what was holding that to <laughs> the thermal paste. So we actually need to pull all of these screws out first, it looks like. Wow, that's all just one piece. And it's all actually screwed in up here too. All right. So we really did have to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen screws. But there is our GPU. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just disconnect these fans here so we can actually just mess with one piece at a time. Now there's our graphics card. And I want to actually test the thermal paste right now because it looks like it's pretty, yeah, it's, it's, it's powder to the touch. So basically what this tells me is that the thermal paste, even though we were only getting in the mid 60s when we were bench, uh, benchmarking this, the thermal paste is not in good condition. It's actually dry and dusty and cracked. So we're just gonna grab a little bit of alcohol and clean this off. Problem with this thermal paste is it's it's basically cement at this point. So I don't even know if I can get it all off. And you can see, I don't know how well you can see. Let's see if we can zoom in there just a little bit. But the thermal paste that's coming off is actually kind of chunky 
coming in little solid chunks there. And that's bad. Thermal paste should not do that. Uh, it should be kind of pasty, but not chunky like that. Once it starts chunking like that, that means it's dry. Now the cooler is in a similar situation. The thermal paste is kind of chunked out to the point where you can, I can touch this and it's, it's solid. So yeah, this, it feels like cement basically. So we want to go ahead and pull that off too. And actually I am going to take off these fans because they are pretty gross on the bottom. thing we need to do is put some thermal paste on here. So I've actually got some Noctua thermal compound here that we'll be putting on, or at least we will once I get the cap off. the majority of it all put back together. We just have to finish dusting up the shroud and we'll be good to go. And there is our graphics card put back together. We're on a separate day now. Uh, ambient temperature is just about exactly the same as it was uh, when we first did our testing before replacing the thermal paste. I've just run the OpenGL test on Cinebench R15, and we pulled up a score of 114.36. Now this is just under seven points higher, or seven frames per second higher than before we replaced the thermal paste. Now for the sake of double checking to make sure that this isn't an error, I am actually gonna run it again, this time with the camera on, so we can make sure that we didn't, uh, we didn't cheat uh, nothing changed. We didn't make any adjustments or anything like that in the way the program was run. So I'm gonna let this run. Um, it, this doesn't surprise me that much. Uh, seven frames per second may not seem like a big deal, but when all we did was replace the thermal paste, that's a big deal. <laughs> we replaced the thermal paste and cleaned the fans, uh, which basically means that the card is not gonna thermal throttle nearly as quickly or as much as it did beforehand. Okay, so that one did drop down to 109.04. Uh, which, I mean, the computer's been running a little bit longer. And uh, when we first ran our tests the first time, we got 107.95. Now, this is a little bit more within the uh, realm of error, uh, what you would expect for just if you ran the test a couple of times anyway. So this doesn't tell us much. And I'm a little bit more surprised that it came up lower the second time. Uh, but we'll go ahead and run Fire Strike and we'll see how else this turns out. Wow, okay, so our graphics score actually came down uh, from 6,499 to 6,471. Uh, and that actually really surprises me because uh, our GPU clock is in the same place. It's still sitting at the uh, 1200. And uh, I, yeah, I, I do not know uh, arguably this is in the margin of error. It's 28 points, so it's not an extreme difference, but I'm just surprised that it went down at all. Um, it, it should have gone up, <laughs> but it didn't. Uh, and it looks like our GPU temperatures are maxing it at 64 degrees. So yeah, I'm not seeing any differences in our settings for this card uh, outside of what we had before. And it is, it is rather surprising to me that our, our numbers went down. Um, and it doesn't look like our temperatures really changed all that much either. 
So it may just be that this card is just showing its age. Okay, so I'm recording this outro again because every other attempt that I've done to re like exit this video has come across as very disappointed, uh, which is what I was after this testing. But the 7870 is not a horrible card. I mean, I, I know that at several times I kind of gave the impression that it's a really old, really underpowered card, and it really isn't. Um, it's kind of impressive what it can do in modern titles, given its age, uh, in comparison to cards that have come out since its inception. Uh, but I was more disappointed that our replacement of the graph uh, of the thermal paste didn't increase our performance. That's where my disappointment came from. I don't want to give the impression that this is a bad card. Far from it. It's actually very impressive, and it does show that the cards were made very well. If after a few years our thermal paste had turned into basically cement, but the card still achieves the same thermals as it does when it's you know, using new thermal paste, that's a good sign. That means that card is actually being handled very well by the way it was built, that it's not gonna overheat if your thermal paste starts to chalk up or anything like that. So 65 uh, is a fantastic temperature for a graphics card to reach under load. Um, I, I don't know why I uh, was under the impression that was bad or why I gave that impression, uh, but I wanted to clarify that in our outro because the card is still a fantastic card for things like Overwatch, if you wanted to play Apex Legends or Fortnite or anything like that. Pretty much any game that you want to play where you're not looking for ultra high extreme graphics, uh, you might be able to use this card for those just fine. It doesn't work for me because I'm editing things like 4K video, and when I do play games I'm looking for at least 1440p, and I want to have decent FPS when I do that. So it's not a great card for my purposes, but if you're playing the right kind of games or you're not looking for really high graphic fidelity and you're looking more for better performance, you're going to be playing on low and low settings anyway, so it's not going to affect you. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, it was interesting and I was disappointed that I could not achieve greater performance by replacing that thermal paste. Um, but by, by all means, this, this is a fantastic card. Um, and I'm glad it was made the way it was, because clearly it's doing something right. Thanks for watching this video. Click on the subscribe button down below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. I will go and then cry myself to sleep because uh, I put a lot of effort into this video, far more than I probably should have. Uh, anyway, we'll catch you guys in the <coughs> we'll catch you guys in the next one.